wiped out and had been distributed over other months so that there wouldn't be a spike seen in the number of babies that died after Three Mile Island. I received a fax some years ago um, from Jane Rickover, who was the daughter-in-law of Admiral Rickover, who was Jimmy Carter's uh, advisor. Um, Jimmy worked with Admiral Rickover in the US Navy. Rickover convinced Carter to cover up the data on the accident at Three Mile Island because he said if the public found out how really serious it had been, it would have made, meant the end of the civilian nuclear power industry. At the end of his life, when he was dying, Rickover recanted to his daughter-in-law, Jane, and said he wished he'd never done that and encouraged the cover-up. There is no question that someone intentionally changed the statistics on infant mortality in the United States shortly after Three Mile Island, and it is essentially a criminal act. I think when you're dealing with uh, Jimmy Carter and the Three Mile Island accident, you have to realize that uh, he was both a nuclear engineer, and so he knew some of the uh, dangers of the situation, but he was also uh, commander in chief of the military, and so he walked a tightrope uh, on this. Careful preparations are being made. Every eventuality is being uh, assessed. And above all, the health and safety of people involved will be paramount. He did cover up the uh, human health problems at Three Mile Island. The work that I'm best known for is the work that I did on Three Mile Island. And um, I didn't go down there after the accident because I knew it was extremely dangerous. One of my colleagues at The Voice, Paul Cowan, did go down there. He died of cancer when he was, I think, 38. I remember when he came into the paper and his hair was quite white and he said, I have, I have cancer. And, I, and uh, when I was down there about five years after the accident, they read a roll call of, I think, 30 reporters who had died who had been there. I think Jimmy Carter knew a lot more than he said. Uh, uh, he had to have known more because he knew enough to be a nuclear engineer, so he certainly did know. Uh, on the other hand, he was keeping the secrets of the military. Uh, I don't know whether he will ever speak out, but uh, Rickover, the head of the nuclear submarine fleet, uh, challenged the uh, administration on their handling of Three Mile Island. I think if you visit that site, you'll see an island in the middle of the uh, Susquehanna River, and on either side there are very high hills. I hesitate to call them mountains, but they're pretty high. And the, uh, the Three Mile Island plant is down in this valley, so when the uh, radioactive cloud was released, it actually uh, hit the side of the mountain so that the people who were living there were really in the uh, radioactive cloud and they did have uh, serious health effects in that area. However, uh, when they asked for a study, they were given a study which was uh, ridiculous from the point of view of health. They drew circles around the plant and they looked at people in each of those concentric circles to see if there was any difference in health. Well, actually, if you were really looking for health problems, you'd look downwind for anything from due to airborne particles, and you'd look downstream for anything that was dumped into the river. And what he found was what you would expect. People were more fearful uh, as they got closer to the reactor. So he blamed the uh, problems, health problems, on fear, and he blamed the media for making people afraid. Uh, it, which, you know, it was a setup. Uh, this is not what happened, and many people were damaged. There were about 2,000 cases for physical harm that were in the courts, and they uh, kept out of the court. They dismissed about 12 expert witnesses who were physicians, oncologists, uh, botanists, biologists, and so on, 
by saying they were not the expertise. And when the judge saw all the expert witnesses of the uh, civilians dismissed from the court, uh, she just dismissed the whole case. So none of these 2,000 cases ever made it into a, a U.S. court. It was an outrageous uh, situation. My husband died uh, seven years ago. His uh, diagnosis was cancer of the lungs. They were still denying that um, there was uh, any fallout, but uh, my brother was in his backyard and uh, he came into the house and he became very nauseated and started to uh, have a vomiting session. And uh, this was um, about, um, I imagine about two hours after the first big cloud came up. About four years later, he died. That particular morning, we walked along the river. Apparently, that was that morning that they were experiencing the problems. Obviously, we didn't know that at that time. Shortly after my basketball season of my sophomore year of college, toward the end of the season, I started to um, physically just feel like I didn't have the stamina. Um, there were one or two games I was playing in where I literally asked the coach to take me out of the game because it just physically didn't feel right. I started to develop a skin rash or skin lesions and uh, just could not keep the food down and could just generally was not doing real well at that point. Um, that's when we came back to uh, Harrisburg and uh, I checked into the Harrisburg Hospital at that point for some tests to see what was going on. And then once they determined that, you know, the high school was within five miles, I was evacuated from the high school, our house was in that area, then I think they started to put two to two together. I feel that from a basketball perspective, um, it robbed me of probably the greatest period of time in my life. For 40 years, the American people have been told, don't worry, nuclear power plants are safe, in fact, the electricity is too cheap to meter, and that radiation should be measured in sunshine units. Radiation is so beneficial, it's the giver of life, the sun itself is a fusion reactor, we owe it all to nuclear energy. Now we know that it was really poison power. Now we know that because of the Cold War and because of the propaganda from the utilities, the nuclear power plants have, in fact, been seeping radioactive poisons into our backyards. Now we know that there has been a cover-up with regards to what could happen in a catastrophic accident and also what happens in the everyday emissions coming from a nuclear power plant. Now we know, now that the Cold War is over, now that we know that documents are being declassified, we begin to realize that the American people, in some sense, were guinea pigs for the nuclear industry. We now know that the military used to do experiments by releasing low-level amounts of radiation into people's backyard. In Cincinnati, two million pounds of uranium dust were emitted into the area to see how far radiation would follow, follow the wind pattern. In New Mexico, again, radioactive materials at a very low level were dispersed into the environment just to see what would happen in case of a nuclear war. Now we know the American people were used as guinea pigs for the nuclear industry. The nuclear power plants were wanted primarily as a, a front for the military industry since they needed so much cooperation, not only the cooperation of the general public, but they needed universities who would teach nuclear engineering and nuclear physics. And, you know, uh, a university is not going to carry a subject if the only job opportunity